Hello, I am Matt with Schematical, and today I'm going to talk about neural evolution of augmenting topologies. I didn't come up with it. It's a very long title, and for short, we'll call it NEAT. So, neural evolution of augmented topologies was actually developed, according to Wikipedia, by Ken Stanley in 2002 at the University of Austin, Texas. Since then, the technique has been implemented by plenty of other people for plenty of other projects, one of the most famous being Seth Bling's Mario. And you can also see a version of that running currently and streaming online 24-7 at the time of this recording as Luigi I.O. In 2017, I took a swing at implementing it myself for Chaos Craft, which is my Minecraft genetic learning algorithm project, as well as Chaos Trainer, which is a small 2D game where you basically train AIs to solve puzzles. When I first started working on this stuff, I didn't really find much documentation, at least in the form of YouTube videos on how to do this. What I ended up doing was looking through the original paper, trying to make sense of that, and I am no scholar by any means, so I struggled with that a bit. And then ended up taking apart code from various projects such as Mario, looking at that, and then tried to piece it together in my own languages, Java for Minecraft, JavaScript actually for a little bit, which was weird, and C Sharp for Unity for the Chaos Trainer game. Since then, a lot of you guys have asked me how I did this and asked for more information on it. And I've been toying around with the idea of doing a video on it for quite a while, so, this is the video. To sum it up in a nutshell, it kind of works like this. This is a thousand monkeys working in a thousand typewriters. Soon, they'll have written the greatest novel known to man. Let's see. It was the best of times. It was the blurst of times. You stupid monkey. <laughs> oh, shut up. <laughs> so, it kind of works like that. We basically put a ton of neural nets out there into the environment, whatever simulation it is, run them, score them, and then take them and iterate on that. You do it enough times and you end up with an AI that can do some pretty impressive stuff. Before we dig in too far, let me just talk about reinforcement learning and supervised learning. So this is a classifier, a basic classifier with supervised learning. You guys have a labeled set of inputs and outputs, in this case, Hot dog, not hot dog. A lot of pictures of hot dogs and a lot of pictures of everything else. By the way, that's a Silicon Valley reference if no one else gets it. Silicon Valley, the TV show on HBO. The example could easily have been cat or not cat, dog or not dog, but it's a basic classifier. And because you've got these data sets that know if the picture, you'd have to tag it ahead of time, of course, but we've got these massive data sets that have been tagged, and because of that, we can actually reward or punish the neural net as soon as it makes its prediction. And that process typically uses backward propagation. Again, something a bit beyond the scope of what I'm going for here, but I'll try and post a link to another video that talks about that in the show notes. What we end up using more often than not is reinforcement learning. There is cue learning as well, again, not for this, but reinforcement learning is a bit different because you don't have the exact right answer directly in front of you all the time. For this example here on screen, we've got Pac-Man, and he could go a couple different ways. There's no one right answer there. And as he progresses, the only wrong answer is one that gets him pinned in a corner and or killed. If you just punish him on that last decision that the neural net made, because it makes you know, hundreds a second, then you end up punishing the wrong neurons potentially because at that point they might have realized they're mistaken and trying to get out of it. Basically, the neat algorithm is not your typical back-propagated problem that you'd solve easily with something like TensorFlow. Though TensorFlow may be able to do this, I actually don't know. Let me know in the comments if you do. Since we can't easily use backward propagation, we instead use something we call a genetic learning algorithm. Genetic learning algorithm is an attempt to simulate how it would work more naturally in nature, similar to Darwinism. You can Google taxonomic rank for basically this list, and it explains how all the animal kingdom and all life form have been broken down by scientists into these different genuses and families and species. 
Mind eat implementations and others are pretty much similar. Each organism, and an organism refers to a neural net, is a member of a species. And if you want to extrapolate even further, which I did with Chaos Net and Chaos Craft, that each genus is a member of a family, and you can go on and on and on like that. Now you might wonder what the little blue circles are. Those represent the individual organisms inside of the species. When I say organism, I actually mean a version of the neural net that we will actually be using to train and run inside our simulations. If you're not familiar with neural nets, go back and check out my previous video on neural nets explained for people without fancy degrees. One thing you might have noticed about these neural nets is they're not structured the same way as the other neural nets with neat, pretty rows, which is actually kind of ironic now that I think about it. But instead of having those pretty rows, the structure is made more on the fly. The middle neurons are added somewhat randomly, and they're connected in a much less structured fashion than the neural nets that you, they use for regular deep convolutional neural nets. This is all part of the neat magic. Another thing that's extremely important for this is that each neuron connection gets its own unique ID. This is extremely important because since we are not using back propagation where we can just adjust the weights on the fly because we know how far off they were, instead we basically take our champions and breed them together. When we breed them together, we need to know which neurons come from where. We wouldn't want two neurons connecting to the same input to the same output. That would be redundant. So in practice, I don't use neuron IDs like G1 or G2. I actually typically use the input and the output. This does get a little trickier with middle neurons, but there are ways around it. I'm not gonna dig into too much here. In generation zero, before we have any data and we've done any runs, these things are constructed completely randomly. In most of my projects, I made a variable that you could tweak that would say how many neurons it would generate for the first one. A lot of times it was four. It just seemed like a nice simple number. So it would generate four neuro connections from the inputs to the outputs with totally randomly generated weights for version zero. And then we'd throw them in the game and let them see how they fared. Generation zero, they're typically insanely stupid as they run into walls or jump into lava because they have no concept of what's going on. For the first generation, you see a couple of, most of them are still, they don't do anything, but the ones that get the furthest get assigned a score. Once we've collected all those scores, we sort the organisms by their scores relative to their own species. Once we have that sorted, we forget about or just delete the bottom half or whatever percentage we've got it set to. In most of my projects, you could adjust that number. And then we would breed or mutate the top half at random until we had enough organisms to populate the simulation again. Then we'd run it again. Let's take a closer look at how the mutation and breeding works. The first one and one of the most commonly used ones because it helps you pinpoint the more finer skills is to just simply adjust one of, or two of the weights of the neuron connectors that you've got by a small number. Or you can add a brand new neuron connector with a completely random generated weight. Or you can disable a connection node that already exists, removing it from the neural net's decision process. You can also select two of the champion neural nets and then breed them together. During this process, you would select neurons from the two parent neural nets and then copy those over to the new child neural net one at a time. Again, you would want to make sure that you weren't copying a neural connector that's already connecting, let's just say I4 to O1 already. So you would compare them using that genome ID we talked about earlier. In selecting the parents, it's most common to breed within a species but it is also typically possible to breed outside of your current species here. Think about breeding dogs, I suppose. Once you have your second batch of neural nets, you repeat the process, reward the ones that achieve anything, 
and continue generation after generation after generation. So that gives you a rough idea of how the neat neural evolution of augmenting topology algorithm works, or at least how I have applied it in my various projects. If you guys would like to hear more on this, or go in depth in the code, or have any thoughts at all really, please feel free to comment. Additionally, if you like more content like this, like, share, subscribe, etc., join the Discord. Our Discord has a pretty good community of people that are way smarter than me that are discussing very interesting things, so feel free to hop on the Discord. Link in the show notes. I'm Matt with Schematical, and thanks for watching.